2021 has been a wild year for ARK, completing its storyline and setting us up for the brand new sequel in 2022. But with many more great features announced and included, expanding the Archiverse to an even bigger, better experience, what were the biggest additions to ARK Survival Evolved in 2021? You're right, kids, it's Ras Clark, and welcome to my top 10 ARC reveals for the year. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share around, and let's get into it. So, in at number 10, released on September the 1st, and surprisingly included with the web streaming service, allowing you to play games pretty much anywhere on any devices that use a browser. Not having perhaps the best launch and uptake, the promising service certainly boasted a fantastic new way of playing ARC for those without a dedicated PC or console. Furthermore, being cross-play with both Steam and Epic Games offered even more players to play on the fly, just as long as you had a reliable internet speed and ideally a compatible controller. In a number 9, a new type of trend for ARK. Unheard of prior to its reveal, July the 1st dropped the Summer Bash event, and with it a blow-up inflatable Rex costume. Whilst ARK has always been known to drop the odd fun-provoking addition over the years, it certainly felt like something that little bit more special, and responsibly so with a literal dance-off trend sparked throughout the community, bringing together devs and players alike. In at number 8, and announced on May the 27th, a full edition of ARK was finally unveiled, providing every DLC dropped throughout the years, wrapped up into the fittingly named Ultimate Offering. After years of being perhaps confused by several different ways to access the latter maps, a clean cut, all inclusive offering was certainly desired, and at a great price point for new players to the game. Especially so right now for Steam players, being less than the base game cost was at launch. In at number 7, during the extra live stream on November the 6th, Wildcard showcased their first footage of ARK running on Steam Deck, the highly desirable Steam Store game running handheld device to launch in Feb 2022, where you'll be hard pressed to even pre order currently. The full game, DLC and mods will all be supported for this version, and an opportunity to play arguably the best version of ARK and on the fly without a PC still pinches that dystopian future forecast you'd struggle to comprehend. In at number 6, and perhaps arguably the biggest surprise reveal of 2021, being heavily requested by the community over the years, and especially more so following Wyvern breeding, October the 15th landed a surprise patch enabling us to finally breed the once aberration exclusive creatures. An incredible surprise owed to thoughts of it being a coax into the DLC, now offers anyone the ability to have as many rock drakes as they'd like providing you've got the parents and ability to finally mutate these up to the giants you desire them to be. In at number 5, and perhaps the most controversial of this list. Considering its radio silence following its initial PC rollout on January the 16th to PC, finally dropping on single player and console on October the 16th, the once beloved setting of being able to level flyers, fairly stolen from us years ago after the perhaps unbalanced gameplay it offered, finally returned as an option to all users who wish to unofficially, presenting a tick box for single player and command line for unofficial, allowing us all to fly at supersonic speeds once again. In at number 4, an unprecedented feature was brought to ARK. Community submitted and voted for creatures became an engagement all players could get involved with from June the 1st, whereby a contest was held to see what creature you desired more in ARK, following a voted round and finally revealing itself as the Dinopithecus, included with Lost Island. Whilst this round was met with perhaps some controversy, it now continues to be a community play as a new round is being held for the next map dropping to ARK next year. In at number 3, and one of the perhaps most hyped launches of ARK Survival Evolved's lifecycle. The final story DLC of our survivor's journey finally came to an unveiling on June the 3rd, and with it an incredible wealth of redefining gameplay features through structures, weapons and creatures, wrapped into a completely new type of environment, defined as our last journey in ARK 1 storyline. Met to a mixed response owed to an ease of entry, it can't be denied, Genesis Part 2 delivered a wonderful conclusion to a game storyline spanning over six years. 
truly invoking the game's name, seeing us propelled into a tech-heavy experience, new environments, inventively tamed creatures that certainly reshaped metas, and many items that all combined had completely abandoned that grind we felt on the island. As an introduction to bring players up to speed, moulding six years worth of gameplay features to be executed with a truly epic and heart-wrenching finale was a feat delivered, and yet a feat left players yearning for something else. In at number two, it was announced on June the 12th, a new map would be coming to Ark, unveiled to beat Lost Island on June the 26th. A surprising one at the least, being quite unheard of in its mod form. The map seemed to offer everything anti-gen 2 players wanted. A return to a primitive style of game, tech defeating creatures in a world more in tune with the very first island we got to play. And did they deliver? Absolutely! Lost Island finally dropped on December the 14th and was met to an overwhelming supportive response set on an incredibly oversized map that dwarves many before it. The three new creatures, the Cinemacrops, Amargosaurus and Dinopithecus, all dropped with the map, felt right at home, with a world that did indeed take us back to that punishing, primitive game many desired and yet with an uplift to bring us in line with later editions, whether creatures or otherwise, and arguably the best bus reward ever. It's just a wonder what will happen when official transfers open and allow those tech-stucked players over. So here it is, in at number one, and on November the 6th, dropped perhaps the biggest fan service announcement of the year. Following an incredible demand from players, perhaps felt they'd lost their request through the reveal of Lost Island, it was finally unveiled one of the best mod maps around will finally be coming to PC and console officially in 2022. Heavily updated, wonderfully handcrafted and featured by many, many players out there, including myself. Fjorda is, and I don't say this likely, the best map I have ever played. Offering a deep sense of adventure within a Nordic backstory, filled with nods to mythology and film-inspired landmarks, within an ever-expansive world of realms to transport to, delivered with your favourite creatures and boss guardians. Whilst we're yet to know exactly what will come with the official version of the map, noting wildcard do change features from their mod iterations, it seems a large majority of Fjorda's current offerings will be coming, along with another three brand new creatures, the turret mounted Andrew Sarkas, the death item ferrying Fjordhawk, and the yet to be revealed community submitted creature. 2021 has been a fantastic year for ARC features. And with some announced for 2022, of which Arc 2 and the animated TV series to drop also, this could only be setting us up for an even more special year, playing Arc Survival Evolved. I hope you all enjoyed this. If you did, comment below, let me know. Happy New Year to you all. I hope you have a wonderful 2022. My name's Ras Clark. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And as always, zah! peace out.